Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 917 10 3. Our officer's on the edge, bro. We were finally able to. Uh, get he said, You have to open the door. I tell him, I'm sorry, I can't. Get, get on the ground! Face down! On the ground! Face, face down. down now! Face down! There's a chance the sergeant might want to talk to you, so thank you very much. Okay, good. Thanks, D. Background of the incident. On July 7, 2020, an incident involving ATF agent James Burke and officers Joseph Fiji and Kevin Winchell of the Columbus Division of Police in Columbus, Ohio, unfolded in a manner that raises critical questions about jurisdiction, authority, and the interaction between federal and local law enforcement. This situation led to a lawsuit reflecting the complexities and potential conflicts inherent in law enforcement operations. ATF agent James Burke went to a residence in Columbus, Ohio to retrieve an arm from an individual not permitted to possess one. When Burke knocked on the door, the individual inside called 911, refusing to open the door and reporting an attempted break-in despite Burke providing his badge number. Officers Fiji and Winchell were dispatched to investigate this call. Upon arrival, the officers confronted Burke, who identified himself as a federal agent. Despite this, Officer Fiji insisted Burke get on the ground, leading to a tense standoff. Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 917 10 3. I'll stay where I'm at. Fine. Why do you got to make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting out I have no, I have no problem making this. Get, get on the ground! Face down! On the ground! Face, face down, down now! Face yeah. down! Make it, make it. Oh, we'll wait. talk later. Sir, wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. No, I was trying to give you my creds! You no, didn't let me show them to you. Never once tried. Burke, maintaining his position as a federal agent, refused to comply with Fiji's demands. This interaction highlights a critical dilemma in law enforcement the clash of authority and jurisdiction between federal agents and local police. The authority of local police, established by territorial jurisdiction, allows them to enforce criminal laws within their city limits. In Ohio, for example, municipal police officers like Fiji and Winchell are empowered to enforce all municipal ordinances and criminal laws of the state and the U.S. Federal law enforcement agencies like the ATF, on the other hand, have jurisdiction throughout the U.S., but are typically limited to investigating matters within federal jurisdiction. These agencies derive their authority from Congress through the United States Code. The incident between Burke and the Columbus officers underscores the complex nature of interactions between different levels of law enforcement. Both parties were operating within their jurisdictions, yet the situation escalated due to a lack of clear understanding or recognition of each other's roles and authority. A key legal question is whether Officer Fiji's commands to Agent Burke constituted lawful orders. The incident raises the issue of whether local law enforcement can issue orders to federal agents and under what circumstances. The resolution of such questions often depends on the specific details of the incident and the laws governing law enforcement jurisdiction and authority. The situation escalated when Officer Winchell arrived and Burke eventually complied with the officer's commands. However, the confrontation did not end there. Officer Fiji deployed his taser, and Burke was forcibly placed in the patrol vehicle, resisting and citing a medical condition. This use of force and the subsequent handling of Burke by the officers are central to the ensuing legal action. The lawsuit resulting from this incident likely revolves around several key issues. The legality of the officer's actions, the use of force, and the potential violation of Agent Burke's rights. These issues speak to broader concerns in law enforcement regarding the appropriate use of force, respect for jurisdictional boundaries, and the necessity for clear communication and cooperation between different law enforcement agencies. The incident is a stark reminder of the challenges in coordinating law enforcement activities across federal and local levels. It highlights the need for better training, communication, and understanding of the roles and responsibilities of different law enforcement agencies. Ensuring that such interactions do not escalate into conflict is crucial for the effective administration of justice and the protection of civil rights. Jurisdictional Complexities The arrest of ATF agent James Burke by Columbus Division of Police Officers and the subsequent lawsuit is a compelling case that sheds light 
on the intricate dynamics between federal and local law enforcement and the challenges that can arise in their interactions. This incident, occurring on July 7, 2020, in Columbus, Ohio, involves complex issues of authority, jurisdiction, communication, and legal repercussions. ATF agent James Burke went to a residence in Columbus to retrieve an arm from an individual not legally permitted to have it. Upon his arrival, the individual inside refused to open the door and called 911, leading to officers Joseph Fiji and Kevin Winchell being dispatched to investigate a reported attempted break-in. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. Show me your ID when I got here. Don't move forward. Okay. forward. You didn't ask for it. He is at. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Chopper. Get on the ground! I'm not getting out of the Sir, I'm just trying to do my time. Just get in the car. car! Why would you make us do this? Upon the officer's arrival, a confrontation ensued. Agent Burke identified himself as a federal agent, but the officers insisted he get on the ground, a command he refused. This situation rapidly escalated, leading to Burke's arrest. This confrontation highlights the challenges in on-the-ground communication between different law enforcement agencies and the potential for misinterpretation and conflict, especially in high-stress situations. The incident raises questions about jurisdiction and authority. Local law enforcement officers have the authority within their territorial jurisdiction and are responsible for enforcing local, state, and federal laws within that area. Federal agents like those from the ATF have nationwide jurisdiction but are typically focused on specific federal issues. In this case, both parties were operating within their jurisdiction, but the lack of clear communication and understanding of each other's roles led to the conflict. The arrest of a federal agent by local police is a rare and complex situation that brings to light the procedural challenges and legal implications of such interactions. It underscores the importance of clear protocols and communication channels between different law enforcement agencies to avoid such incidents. Role of the ATF The ATF is a federal law enforcement organization within the Department of Justice. ATF agents like Agent Burke are responsible for investigating criminal and regulatory violations of federal laws related to arms, explosives, arson, alcohol, and tobacco smuggling. In this incident, Agent Burke was performing his routine duties, which involved investigating arm-related violations. The case touches on the issue of delayed denials in firearm purchases. These occur when individuals purchase firearms but are later found through background checks conducted by the FBI to be ineligible to own them. In such cases, ATF agents are responsible for retrieving these firearms. This responsibility often puts ATF agents in potentially confrontational situations as seen in Agent Burke's case. The arrest led to a lawsuit, with Agent Burke presumably suing the officers for wrongful arrest. This lawsuit brings up legal questions about the rights of federal agents in the course of their duties, the extent of local police authority over federal agents, and the proper procedures for handling such conflicts. The incident and the resulting legal action have broader implications for law enforcement in the U.S. They underscore the need for better coordination and mutual understanding between federal and local agencies. It also highlights the potential risks and challenges inherent in law enforcement, where officers and agents must make quick decisions in complex and rapidly evolving situations. Are you guys the ones that originally called? Okay. What what did he say to you when he was talking to you? I don't need the medic. The, the taser didn't bother You just said call an ambulance if you don't want Yeah, no, you don't want one. Get in the car. Get in the car. Our officers on the edge, but we were finally able to uh, He said, you have to open the door. the door. I tell him, I'm sorry, I can't. There's a chance the sergeant yeah, might want to talk to you, so thank you very much. Here, okay, you good. Guys. Thanks, Steve. Yes. Indecision. The arrest of ATF agent James Burke by Columbus police officers is a notable case that highlights the complexities of law enforcement operations involving multiple agencies. It underscores the importance of clear communication, understanding of jurisdictional authority, and the need for protocols to manage interactions between different levels of law enforcement. The legal implications of such incidents have far-reaching effects on the policies and practices of law enforcement agencies at both the federal and local levels. 
evaluation of the incident. The situation escalated when Agent Burke, despite identifying himself as a federal agent, was asked repeatedly to get on the ground by the officers, which he refused. This incident raises critical questions about the legal rights of citizens and law enforcement officers. In general, citizens are not obligated to open their doors to law enforcement without a warrant. This principle was established in landmark Supreme Court cases like Jones v. United States of 1958 and Payton v. New York 1980, which underscore the Fourth Amendment protections against unreasonable searches and seizures, particularly in a person's home. Following the confrontation, Agent Burke was arrested but later released without charges. Subsequently, on December 4, 2020, he filed a lawsuit against the city of Columbus and the officers involved, alleging excessive force, among other violations. The incident resulted in Burke being reassigned to an administrative role within the ATF due to injuries sustained during the arrest. The incident presents a complex picture. While Agent Burke was likely acting within his lawful authority, his refusal to comply with the officer's commands and his demeanor contributed to the escalation. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're going to get air to you. Get no, your no, legs no. in. Get your Sir. legs in. We're closing this door. You did he ever try to, did he ever try and break the door or anything like that? Yes, he is still knock on He said, I will stay here until evening. If you well, that's what we thought, but then he wouldn't get in the car. I'm trying to get in on his house. If he is an actual police officer, he ought to be ashamed of himself. On the other hand, the Columbus officer's approach including drawing their weapons without an immediate threat and failing to verify Agent Burke's identity adequately, is also questionable. The situation illustrates the importance of de-escalation and thorough investigation in law enforcement encounters. The incident between Agent Burke and the Columbus officers underscores the complicated interplay between federal and local law enforcement jurisdictions. The officers, while potentially within their rights to secure the scene, may have acted hastily without properly assessing the situation. Agent Burke's insistence on not complying with the officer's commands, while understandable given his federal authority, might have exacerbated the situation. This encounter highlights the need for effective communication, de-escalation, and thorough investigation in law enforcement. Had there been a better understanding and verification of identities and intentions at the outset, the confrontation might have been avoided. The incident shows that while law enforcement officers have significant responsibilities and powers, these must be balanced with proper procedures and respect for legal rights. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.